Today we got the OG fish traps and we're gonna be setting these guys for 24 hours at my dock because my dock has been on fire recently. So hopefully we can catch some awesome fish in 24 hours with these fish traps. So you guys know we got some OG traps. We got the OG crab trap, the new crab trap. This guy is always in them. This guy is always in them. We got the we got the traps for days. We haven't done one of these videos in a couple months and you guys absolutely love them. So we're back again with another epic fish trap 24 hour video and we got some goodies and the dock has been on fire because of my new snook lights that I got. There's just been fish all day, every day, even at night. The amount of fish here at night is absurd. Tarpon, snook, so many fish. So those lights are bringing in all those little guys and hopefully they swim into these traps. Now before every video, you gotta have a hearty meal cause we're gonna be filming all day. So thank God we have factor meals to help me with a quick, easy meal that's healthy. So I have a ton of energy to film videos all day long. Now I love factor meals because I'm working all the time. I'm always filming, making content, going out, catching fish, and I need a quick lunch every day. Lunch is like the most important meal for me. If I don't have something quick and healthy, I literally will just skip lunch. So this is actually huge for me. Now you guys know I have worked with HelloFresh in the past, but HelloFresh actually owns Factor now. So with a wide variety of meals to choose from, whether it's Factor or HelloFresh, I kind of like switching back and forth between each brand. You guys can now enjoy both brands with a discount with me. It's a great calorie conscious option and a delish dietitian approved calorie smart meal with around or less 550 calories per serving. Now I like to work out a lot and some of you guys probably work out too. So if you need an extra boost to support your wellness goals and feel your absolute best, you can try the protein plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. You gotta get those gains, baby. Gotta have that protein. So all you do is pop it out of the fridge, pick the one you like. I'm having herb crusted chicken. Slide this off, pop a few holes and you're ready to put that in the microwave. Two minutes, it's ready. And just like that, bada bing, bada boom, done. You got your lunch, super quick and easy. And delicious, and hot. Now, if you guys wanna give this a try, get yourself some delicious lunches, you guys can go to factor75.com or click the link below in my description or pinned comment and use code FISHGUYCHRIS50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. So go check out Factor 75. Now let's get back into the video. So sadly, this trap actually got snapped in half last time we did this and a giant gaping hole. So it could have been a nurse shark that swam in here and just freaked out and shot out the side or a giant barracuda. You never know, but this, this trap got completely completely and utterly destroyed in our last 24 hour trap. So we're gonna need to build a bigger one. So we're gonna need to build another giant one for sure. If you guys wanna see a giant fish trap build, maybe bigger than this, drop a like on this video and I'll make it happen. But this guy is sadly out of commission and he's no longer usable. <sighs> it's a sad day when you have to get rid of a fish trap. Now when it comes to the crab traps, these have failed me recently and uh, I haven't been able to catch any crabs of them. I don't know what happened to all the crabs. They, they they literally left the canals. And that leaves us with our other OG traps, which have always been good. I've had these guys for a long time. These guys catch fish, trust. Now I have a box of goodies here and any chumming or any 24 hour fish trap video, you always start with the most important part, the chum, okay? So this is a box of goodies, including the chum. So since we set these for 24 hours and we let them sit, we might as well have a big block of chum sitting in the water, fermenting, getting all those fish down the canal. Because once they smell that trail of chum, they come right up to the stock. So we have Mahaden, Manhaden, Menhaden, whatever it is, Menhaden chum. This is what we always use. This is the, I love this chum. Bionic bait, Menhaden chum. It's a must try for anyone chumming. Thankfully, I've already eaten lunch, so I don't need to uh, touch this and then eat right after this. I can just enjoy my stinky hands with the chum. So we're gonna be using the floating chum bag today. You guys know I love these videos. I love the 24 hour traps and I love the chumming videos we do on Barb's Buzzin' cause it's actually, it's just so fun to sit out here and actually see what swims by. Sharks, big big tarpon, snook, and snook season is 12 o'clock midnight tonight. So we may have to camp out here at night while these traps are fermenting and catch a snook and then eat them. That might be on the to-do list. Honestly, touching chum has gotta be one of the worst things in the world. I hate it, I don't know why, big, it's on my face. Is it on my face? Where? Something hit my face, I think it was. Definitely yeah, that was gross. And that smells really good. Too. Yeah, this smells fantastic. That feels good. Once you get it in here, it's just easy. Throw it in, let it sit. And there's a big hole in the back, which is good, so. The puffers will be able to gnaw on that all day long. Tie it off right here. Bada bing, bada boom. We're chumming, we're chumming. And I, I'm really curious to see what kind of fish it brings in 24 hours to the traps. Now, especially because we have the snook lights, which is pretty much like chum every single night because it draws all the fish right to those lights and that brings the bigger fish. 
So we got a little extra bonus, a little flavor on this 24 hour fish trap video because we got new snook lights. So we're testing out the theory. Is it gonna bring some cool fish? We won't know until we see tomorrow. So we are rocking with three different baits, not only the chum, not only the lights, three different baits. And the best way I think to do this is to mix it all together in a bucket, which is exactly what we're gonna do. Then you can bait the trap. So it's like a mix of all three baits in one trap. So we got three different kinds of baits. We got the Village Pride Thread Herring, we got the Squid Calamar, and we got some shrimp. So those are the three baits we're using. I'm gonna show you guys what they look like here. These things just look like pilchard. I think they even might be. I, I still get confused. Herring, sure, this is what they are. Just pretty much like a pilchard. Now it's literally a block, so they're absolutely frozen in there. This is gonna call the fish for sure, dude. Look at that block. That is a block of fish right there. So that is the first ingredient to our chum is gonna be thread herring. Next, we have the beautiful, gorgeous squid. Every fish in the ocean likes squid. You can catch anything on it. That's why it's great for these 24 hour chumming videos because it gets all the fish here because they love it. Look at all these goodies, man. The fish are about to have a party in here. And of course, we sprinkle it on. It's our little topping for the day. A couple sprinkles. Now we let this defrost. Now we let this defrost, just mix it all up. It's gonna be so gross, but it's gonna be delicious for the fish. That's what we're gonna do. Easiest way to defrost anything is with a hose. Let it sit like that. It's gonna become literally a chum bucket. That is our chum bucket right there. Shout out SpongeBob, shout out Plankton, the chum bucket. And that right there is some gorgeous squid. Some gorgeous squid. Fish love, whoa. Fish love the squid, bro. I'm telling you, I've caught, I think I've, done my most successful fish trap videos where I caught the, I think I caught like a box fish one time and some other crazy puffer fish with the squid. They like the squid a lot. So once that defrosts, oh. shrimp's getting away. Oh. It's all right. Once that defrosts, it's gonna be delicious for the fish. And they, I think they like the ink inside of the squids. I don't know. It, it gets them fired up, let's be honest. Let's just see if anything's around now, now that there's no chum in the water. One piece of shrimp, set it down. Let's see what's at the dock with no chum, no chum. I already don't see any fish, so. It's gonna take a while for those tides to come in and out to get that chum here, but I did see a school bus puffer fish when I was over there for a second, so. If we can catch a school bus puffer fish, maybe we'll put them in one of the ponds. Maybe, I hope to catch something cool enough to go into one of the ponds. The big ones, the shark pond, the ones in the garage, or even maybe one over here. Let's try to catch something in the fish traps to go into the ponds. Puffers, so the classics. These guys are always here. They're gonna be in probably every single fish trap we catch today, or we pull today. The puffer fish are always all over the place, so that's obviously a staple, the puffer fish. It's just all the extra stuff that you don't know. But you gotta get through the puffers to get the cool stuff. That's why we use the fish traps. Whoa! What? I got a lizard. He's I, on you, he likes you. I thought that was a f I don't know what I thought that was. Dude, why is he on you? I like lizards though. What the <laughs> frick was that, dude? Do you think that was the sea cockroach? That, I thought it was the sea cockroach, bro. <laughs> you know all the sea cockroaches on the side? Let's get you in a bush. Dude, he likes you, Whoa, bro. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. So, let's just calm down, please. You're fine, I, I, don't, I like these kinds of lizards. See, look at that. Jumped right on my hand. And if you don't know, in Florida, we have these kinds of litter, lizards, which is just, <laughs> which is just like the normal lizard, but we've, they've been taken over by the curly tail lizard and the iguanas. They eat these guys. The curly tail lizards are disgusting. They're the worst. These guys we like, so we're, we're nice to them. I'm gonna put them on a bush. Don't jump anywhere. Go on the bush. Boom, just that like that. Sick. That was amazing. I don't know where that lizard came from. Did it fall from the sky and go onto my arm? I have no idea. All right, enough of that. Let's get the traps going. That was scary for a second. Why did I freak out so much? I thought it was, I thought it was a sea cockroach, dude. Gross. It's been about five minutes in here, and this is still a frozen block of squid. I can try to peel them off one by one, like this, which is lovely, or we can just wait. But as you can see, the fish have all defrosted real nice. So these guys are pretty much, look at this thing. That's a stud. That's a nice big old fish right there. That's perfect, that's what we want. Let's give one over there. Let them, let them start smelling the chunk. But this is really the gold is the squid. It's just not defrosting right. So I'm gonna have to peel them all one by one. If you guys just look at this thing, look how weird that is. Like that thing was alive. These are wild caught squid. So like, look at the colors on that thing. 
Very interesting species. What do they even eat? I have no idea. But they are money bait. That's all that matters. There's our chum bucket. Here's our chum bucket. It looks so gorgeous. I'm gonna dump the water out. Look at the tentacles, dude. That's crazy. Yeah. Love that. Look at all these things. Just, that's so nasty, man. So, we're gonna bait it up. We're gonna bait it up. This guy is gonna be the first to be baited. He is such a beast. This guy catches fish. So, a couple squid, a couple white fish, or a thread heron. We do the whole nine on these. And we're gonna load these to the nines, just like that. Now the goal is for all the food to be gone tomorrow, so the fish can really enjoy it. And then we could check out what was actually in the trap. So there's our first trap loaded up, ready to go. Then we got the black one, which I'm not gonna put as much chum in this one because it's a smaller trap, but this one is actually really good because it has the holes that are a little bit bigger. So we can have a little bit slightly of a bigger fish go in here. Give him another one of these and give him maybe, uh, give him another squid too. Why not? Give him another squid. Beautiful. Nice mixture right there. Oh, can't forget about the shrimp. Gotta put Single shrimp, let's put a shrimp in there. This guy catches crazy fish as well. Boom, this guy catches some nuts fish. So we're definitely gonna load it with squid. That's like four squid in one. A couple of these, give him a shrimp. These three fish traps right here are the best ones. By far the best ones. And this guy we're gonna set first and he's gonna be right here on the edge of the ladder, just like we always do. Right next to the ladder, just like that. He's kind of gonna hover there. So it's dead low tide and it's still perfectly in the water. So that's a good thing. So if the water's not gonna get too low. They can still swim inside of it. And then once the water rises, it's gonna be way down to the bottom. Perfect for the fish to swim inside. Now we are gonna also do a crab trap. We're gonna do one crab trap just to see if there's any lurking about. If there's not, we might have to do a dedicated video of setting these guys for like a week straight and catching a million blue crabs. So if you guys do wanna see me try to do that with like different baits, we'll, we'll get like six different traps and each will have a different bait. So one, people say chicken's really good. We'll do one with chum, one with fish, one with squid, one with steak. We'll do six different traps to see which one is the best, which bait is the best. Cause I know people have a lot of success, success catching crabs with chicken. So we may have to test that theory at this very dock. Let me know by dropping a like on this video. Now these, eh, I'll, I'll put some squid in there, but the crabs really love the fish because that's what they really eat. But I hear chicken is the best for catching crabs. So we may, I think that'd be a really interesting video. Six crab traps, six different baits to really test which is the best crab bait. I'll leave that just for the crabs. Toss them right off the boat. Right here. That's where the crabs have usually been, but it's been a weird last couple months with no crabs around. So we shall see, maybe we need to spice up the bait. Maybe they don't want the fish. Maybe they actually want the chicken. So I think that video would be really fun to do. Now our other two traps are gonna go underneath the jet ski dock because this is where all the fish like to hang out because it's kind of like safe for them to be underneath the jet ski. I don't know what it is, but all the fish, even the snook and the tarpon that I see come to the lights at night, they go, if they see me or anything or they get spooked, they go right underneath this jet ski dock. So the fish clearly like being under here. So I'm gonna drop this one over here and this one over there. Then we're set. All right, there goes the black one. There goes the black one. And now the green one, which is a beast. I'm gonna tie this actually to the ladder. So it's gonna be hovering right underneath the water. Perfect spot right by the ladder. There we go. Perfectly set traps. Now we wait for 24 hours. I'm gonna check them out at night when the lights are on, see if there's anything big swimming around. But now we wait for 24 hours. We got our traps set. We wait. We see what's inside tomorrow. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's been 24 hours, a little bit over 24 hours. It's about three hours over 24 hours. It's a lot less, less of a nice day. We got some storms coming in, as you can see. The aftermath of hurricane on the West Coast. It's been really windy today and yesterday and a lot of rain. But first thing we do when we do the fish trap videos, we scoop up a bucket of water so we can put all of our fish inside of it. Okay, there's our bucket of water. And let's hope we catch some fish today, ladies and gentlemen. I think we did because the fish have been nuts. The fish have just been all over the place. I was gonna do a video late at night of me catching fish at night during this video, but I think I'm gonna wait to do that in my next video because I'm trying to catch some live shrimp and then bring them all back to my house and fish them at night with you guys. That would be fun. So I think that's in the next video. So I think we start with this trap over here. Actually, we're gonna start with the crab trap because that's my least faith. I have the least amount of faith in the crab trap. And like I mentioned yesterday or before in this video, it takes a long time. Crab traps is probably should be 
left in the water longer than 24 hours. So we're gonna try in a later video for sure doing like a full week of it sitting in the water or like three days sitting in the water to see what we can catch in the crab trap with different baits. I think it's a great idea, but let's just see 24 hours with fish. Let's see if there's any, anything inside besides a bad smell. As I suspected, nothing. The fish aren't even touched. The fish aren't even touched. <sighs> see, I think it needs to be in there longer I don't know, before when I used to do these videos, they used to come so quickly. It used to be like an hour and they were already inside of this. But now, nothing inside. So we need to try different bait and we need to try more traps and we need to try leaving it in longer, for sure. I think that's a must. The bait that goes uneaten goes back into the water for the rest of the fish. Now let's go to trap number two. All right, fish trap number one. Let's see what's inside. This is the actual fish trap and it's not a crab trap. So let us see, I'm stuck on some barnacles here. And we have fish and I see some color in there. And I see some color in there, guys. Let us see. This is what we're after, we're after the color. Look at that, okay, hold on. Jack, come down here. We have squid, extra squid that they didn't eat. It goes back to the fish. We have, okay, the perch found these. The perch found this trap. Two perch, and actually decent perch. The perch love the fish traps, but if they get into the light and you move them around a little bit, they got some color, they got some shiny. And the best part about these is their mouth. Look at that mouth. That is the funniest mouth ever. Every time I catch them, I enjoy going like this because that is just so hilarious. And these are great for feedings, which is fantastic. The next thing, ah, I don't think this guy made it. I think he got eaten by this puffer. Oh no, look at this Cuban hog or Spanish hog. I don't know, either one. No. These guys are so sick. I think he got eaten by this puffer. His gill is all messed up. I think he got slightly eaten. This is what we were after. Little aquarium fish like this. That is an absolute bummer that I think his fin got torn up or his gills got torn up by this guy, probably trying to eat the same piece of squid together. These things are savages. They're the ruination and they ruin everything. They eat everything. If anything's in their way, they're gonna eat it. So this guy probably took a nip out of that, out of that hogfish and that was it for the hogfish. That sucks. This guy could have gone in one of our ponds, dude. So sick. That is a bummer. That is a bummer. But we got perch and you know what that means? My fish love perch. How long will they last? I just fed the Emperor Snapper last night. So, ow! Oh my God, they're gonna last. The Emperor Snapper's full. Just kidding, he's coming for him. The Emperor Snapper is full. That is rare. That is rare. See, I fed him last night and he's stuffed, but maybe the sharks will wanna eat this guy. So we're just gonna leave this guy. So we're just gonna leave this guy in this pond and the sharks will definitely eat him. They love sand perch, they love any bait fish. So let's leave them in there. The Emperor Snapper's gonna eat that one tonight and the shark's gonna eat that one tonight. So we set a fish trap and we got some food for our tank. All right, trap number one was a win, but not. This sucks, that sucks. This is the first time I've ever pulled a trap and a fish is not like ready to go, not fully alive. That is a bummer. The puffer definitely, like you can see his fins, they're all messed up on the top. Like he has no fins on top. The puffer must have ate him there. Puffers suck at the end of the day. So. We're gonna keep our same bucket here, put the rest of the fish we catch in. Let's pull trap number two, fish trap number two, trap number three, fish trap number three. Let's pull trap number three and see what's in that one. All right, trap number three is getting pulled and we've got fish. Two locals, two locals. Oh my God, I'm, I'm so annoyed because the one local, the actual local that I don't see a lot, which is the hogfish, is not, not alive, which is a bummer. But we do have a couple locals. Look at this Haas puffer. Forrest, look at this puffer fish. Forrest, look at that puffer. Isn't that insane? Don't get bit by this thing. And these guys are, in, I told you, what did I say yesterday? These fish will be in every single trap, guaranteed. And then we have a nice mangrove snapper. And speaking of mangroves, these guys have to be 10 inches. And check this out. In honor of snook season starting, I got myself a fish ruler for the dock. And let's just, I'm just gonna show you how big these things actually have to be. To keep. So this guy would be seven inches. They have to be 10. So imagine a 10, man 10 inch mangrove snapper, much bigger than this little guy. And a snook has to be all the way between, it has to be way over this, it has to be between 28 and 32. It has to be this long a snook to keep and eat. But look, a seven inch mangrove snapper, not even close. He's gotta get much bigger than this in order to keep. Not even worth keeping this big because you can't even eat them. There's no meat on that. But a 10 inch got some decent fillets. So see ya, buddy. 
get bigger and I'll eat you later. Now, before we pull our last trap, if you guys do enjoy the 24 hour fish trap videos, let me know by dropping a like on the video and I will continue to make more videos just like this. But it helps me out a lot and I would appreciate it very much if you drop a like on this video, helps me out and lets me know you guys wanna see more. Let's pull our last trap. All right, next trap, the last trap, trap number four is the black one with the kind of bigger holes. So I gotta quickly unclip the middle parts. It's like attached together and then dump it in the bucket. So, see what's going in trap number four. We got fish. Oh my God, we scored. How am I supposed to get up here? Force, get out of the way, buddy. You're in the way. Oh no, he's stuck in the middle. Okay. Oh my God, we scored. That is better than a hogfish. Look at this guy. First of all, there was no squid left in that trap. It was just the one fish left. This is not a, not a regular catch. That's a parrot. This is a parrot fish. And I don't know what's on him. Is there a shrimp on him? What's on him? Look at the shrimp on him. Look at this guy. What is that? That was on the parrot fish. Look at that. This shrimp was attached to the parrot fish. Look at that. Look at this guy. That is sick. That's a baby parrot. And that, that shrimp right there that just was in my hand was actually on his body, crawling on him. Look at that. We can put this guy in an aquarium. That's where the shrimp was attached to the parrot. That is so sick. Me and Jack try to catch these guys every time on rod and reel. They are so hard to catch on rod and reel, but in a fish trap, you can get them. We've caught blue parrots in a fish trap, and now we've caught, I don't even know what kind of parrot that is. It's just a red parrot, red and brown, but it's sick and, can, and it can definitely go in an aquarium and that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're putting this guy in one of our tanks. I'd consider it a success. Now in honor of just getting this pond set up, this fish isn't that big. We might be able to put him in the mini saltwater pond outside. Plus, you know, he's right by the canal where we caught him in. I think it's nice to have him in here. I'm just thinking I have to keep an eye on him because bear fish, I don't know how friendly they are with other fish, but we can try this guy in the pond. Look at him in the light, in the sunlight. Look at that. And then the shrimp, look at the shrimp on the other side of me. Where is he? He just fell off. This shrimp is sick. This little shrimp, dude. That is crazy. I wonder what their whole deal is. Look at that. So sick. So let's get this guy in the pond. We're gonna put him in here. First, let's put the shrimp in. Look at the shrimp. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Go to the rocks though. Go to the rocks. There we go. We got a new shrimp and a new fish. That is sick. So I'm gonna keep a sharp eye on this guy because he would be the biggest fish in this pond. So we're definitely gonna have to watch him. Look how cool and pretty that fish is. Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous fish. Look at that. That is awesome. So he's probably gonna tuck up onto those rocks because that's what pair of fish like to do. But once the, once the sunlight comes shining in here, I'm gonna take some clips of him and hopefully he's out and about swimming around because right now he's underneath a rock. But that is a sick fish. I did not think we'd catch a fish to go into this pond. This is like the last pond I would think we could push it, put a fish in. But you guys let me know what you think. Do you think that parrot fish is too big to put in here? I have no problem scooping him out and putting him with the sharks because he would honestly do really well with the sharks or this pond. So you guys let me know in the comments, should I leave him in here or should I put him in the shark tank? And uh, cause I think he would do great in either one of those ponds. Cause that is one awesome looking fish. Those colors, he's like red and brown and white. That is a really cool pair of fish. He's not the bright blue one we've been hunting, but that is still a really cool pair of fish. He's camo with the rocks. He is camo with the rocks. You guys can look right here. He's up in those rocks underneath in the little tunnel and he's like blends right into those purple rocks. So hopefully he doesn't bother any of the fish. If I do see him bothering any of the fish, I'm gonna put him in the other tank, but I don't think he should. They don't eat other fish, so he should be fine, but I'm still gonna keep a sharp eye on him. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you guys did enjoy today's video and you wanna see more like this, drop a like on the video and I'll make it happen. I'll catch you guys in the next one, peace.